So if we're going to polish this, that copper comes with um, a grain on it. When the copper is, is manufactured into a sheet form like this, it's being sent through these mills, these press mills. And that creates a grain in the surface of the copper. If you play the light off the surface of the copper, you can clearly kind of see that grain. It's certainly directional. In this case, it's running this way. Plus there's other random scratches on there and those scratches can be pretty minor or they can be pretty major. I mean, it depends on how you treated your piece of copper. So you may or may not want random scratches in your image and you may or may not want that grain. But the fact is that grain, because it is a very light texture in the surface of the copper, is going to hold ink in your intaglio prints. Um, a properly wiped plate printed with this grain, your ground of your image will be a light gray. That can sound kind of cool and captivating, but you know, 99% of the time I'd say it's a bad idea to leave it because it just really, really kind of deadens your image uh, too much. So most of the time, we want to polish the copper before we start working on it. Um, it is possible to buy copper that has already been polished, uh, but you're gonna pay a lot of money for that, a lot of more money for that copper. We buy from an industrial source that doesn't care if there's a grain in the copper or not. And that means that uh, it's fairly cheap for us and then we can cut that down, but we have to polish. So this video is going to address that. Um, follow me over here. So here we have a cart that is really dedicated polishing copper. It lives here in the acid room. Everything you're going to need should be on this cart, but it's worth double checking. We're not going to, to do the polishing up here in the room. We're going to go outside. We can use um, the outdoor covered area of sculpture, provided we are not disturbing a class in there that's that's going on at that moment. That's the best place. The danger with polishing copper is the copper dust that we are going to be producing in large quantities that can have um, health impacts and so you don't want to expose yourself needlessly to it. The most, uh, the biggest danger is the inhalation so you might want to take a look around this cart. What is in there? Let me move it over here to where the camera can easily see it. So there's a big flat top with a piece of plywood permanently attached to it. That's our work table. These are the pads, the abrasive pads that we're going to use on the, the sander polisher to remove the grain. And the pads come, we stock it in three grits. 600, 1000, and 1500. And of course the higher number is the finer grit. So we are going to use these in sequence from 600 and then to the 1000 and then we're going to finish with the 1500. And then the final thing we're going to do is we're going to use this pad for true mirror finish polishing. So that's the sequence we're going to be doing, but what else do we have on here? We have boxes of gloves. We have a box of N95 masks. So I will swap out my mask that is the surgical mask that is being used for the pandemic for an N95 mask while I'm polishing the copper. 
We have a 3M compound for polishing. We will use this in conjunction with that big furry thing at the end. Um, and we have other odds and ends, but somebody put a box in here for the used abrasive pads. I don't see a reason to save these. When these are dead, they're dead. So we might as well toss these. Um, in fact, it's not, not good to leave these sitting around because then we're just bringing the copper dust into the building. Uh, so we should probably just toss that. Um, that's the basic stuff. I'm probably gonna need an extension cord. So I've gotten some extension cords. There's some that live uh, beneath the clock over there on the wall of the shop where they usually live, so I've grabbed some of those. I'm gonna put this cord back up in there so I don't trip myself along the way. We're gonna stop this video and we'll pick up again when we're downstairs. All right, so here's the tool that we're gonna to use to polish this Makita sander polisher. It's a fairly basic tool. I pulled the, uh, I have two things here to control, the button and the trigger. Um, I can just hold the trigger and it spins or I can do both together and it will lock on so if I hold the button down I release the lock by pulling on the trigger again if you are polishing a large piece of copper it can become tiring to continuously hold the trigger down so that's why the lock becomes useful Although, you can also just avoid the lock completely. A few other basic controls you have on this. On the top, in the back, you have this little dial. This is about RPM, and you can see it there. So, each of these numbers corresponds to an RPM setting. You do not need a high RPM. In fact, I would say just leave it at four. Uh, that's about in the middle. Um, with the higher RPMs, there's a little greater chance that something will catch on this and it will throw the tool or throw the object that you're polishing. Both can be dangerous. Um, that's the essence of how to control or what the controls are on this. Now we also need to be able to swap this out. So the way you do that is you have this button right here. You see like right now it's spinning the motors, by turning this, I'm turning the motor inside. If I press this down, it's just a, a metal cylinder that's going to eventually find a hole that locks it. Once that's in, and you'll feel it seat, then this is locked. So if I turn this now, instead of turning the motor, it just slides right off that. This is the pad that I want to put on to the Makita for polishing, uh, for starting to polish. This is what I want to use in conjunction with the abrasive pads. So I'm going to start with the 600 grit. And the way this works is you have a side that is the grit and you have a side that is Velcro. So this has the loop of the Velcro, or the hook is the better way to put it, I guess. And this has the loop of the Velcro. So this goes on to that just like that. It's really as simple as that. You do want to make sure it's centered to the disc, and that's it. And then this screws on to this. I'm going to set this out of the way. I'm going to push that button, I'm just going to lock it in, but I'm just going to turn that and hand tighten it. That's it. That's all you have to do. Next thing is we grab a bunch of these clamps right here. What cannot happen is if we're going to polish this, there's a lot of force and a lot of strength in that tool. 
if, if I'm using this and something catches, something from this surface or an edge, and if it catches here, and instead of this gliding nicely over the surface, instead it's caught, something's gonna give. Either the tool is gonna get thrown back at me, or depending on how I'm holding this, the plate could get thrown. Now this is not a knife, but it ain't a tennis ball either. So if, this, if a piece of copper gets slung across the room like a Frisbee, that's potentially really dangerous. So, as we get ready to do this, we want to make sure that we have enough clamps on there that that ain't going to happen. It is a bad idea, and there's a, an extra box right here, labeled mat board. So if you have a clamp, that is gonna scratch the copper. Use some mat board chips to prevent that from happening. These clamps still have some of the rubber on them, but it ain't gonna hurt to put a mat board in there. Um, using this method to polish a very small plate is almost impossible because once you've clamped it down there's nowhere left for this thing to operate. For that reason I would recommend one of two solutions. If you have a very small plate polished by hand, not with this. Two, when you're thinking, I need a very small plate polished, but I can't polish a small plate with this. So what I'll do is I'll polish a larger sheet, and when it's all perfect, I will cut off my smaller piece. That's what I'm doing today. So I only need immediately some small pieces up one end. And I could have just cut a strip like that and been able to clamp it down on one side while polishing the other and I can just be moving the clamps as I go. This is a lot of copper to polish on the one hand, but on the other hand, once it's done, I'll have nice, clean, polished copper for a while, okay? <laughs> so I've got four clamps going on. As I'm polishing, I will move those as I go so that I can get to each area. Now the basic idea is I'm going to go over the whole piece of copper first with the 600 grit. The job of the 600 grit is to remove the grain, nothing else. The grain and the scratches. So the job of the 600 grit is to remove anything that's currently existing on the surface that I don't want. When that's done, I'm going to switch to the 1000 grit. The job of the 1000 grit is to remove the texture left by the 600 grit. Then as I finish with the 1500 grit, the finest, its only job is to remove the texture left by the 1000 grit. And then finally, with that wool polishing pad and the polishing compound, I'm gonna use that to remove the texture left by the 1500 grit. So I am moving from coarse to fine each new stage removes the texture left by the previous, okay? Now when you're using this thing, I'm gonna put my safety goggles down. So notice I'm wearing the nitro gloves. I'm gonna wear safety goggles. I've got the N95 mask, not a normal surgical mask. I need to actually be filtering out particulates with this. So, this is going to spin. It, it has an arrow right there that shows you the direction it's going to spin when you're holding it like this. So when I'm holding it this way, it's going to spin clockwise, this way. The way I want to hold this when it's spinning and have contact with the copper is I only want between noon 
and 9 o'clock. So between those two areas to be in contact. I am not going to put the tool down flat. I am not going to angle it down like that. I'm going to angle it like this. That's it. Now, keeping track of where the pad is in contact is important. Because imagine I'm spinning. If I place it right like that, if it's spinning this way, that means the force is coming in from the outside of the plate to the inside. That's potentially dangerous because if it catches on the plywood or if it catches on the edge of the copper, the tool is going to be thrown at me. So if I'm going to be in contact between here and here, when I'm at the edge like that, I want to be like this. So that the motion is going from the surface of the plate off, not the reverse. If I'm standing here, you might see some people switch from instead of this portion in contact, they switch to this portion in contact. That works because now the circle is coming from the inside of the plate to the outside. Um, you just have to be very aware of what you're doing. Um, either you move your body so that the direction is from the inside to the outside, or you move the portion that's in contact. Um, the 600 grit will remove copper fairly fast and produce a lot of dust. Nonetheless, the pad itself wears out pretty quick. So it remains really abrasive, you know, maybe for four minutes of continuous work. So you'll see it again in a second when this starts to get clogged up and I just have to replace it. Now these pads are actually quite expensive. They cost us over a dollar a piece. So we never want to waste these or use them needlessly. Uh, so we want to use it as much as we can, but we also have to acknowledge that pretty quick it's going to have lost its abrasion. So I'm going to go ahead and start. Notice the way I set it down, upside down with the, that handle down, so that it's not going to go rolling around anywhere. But you can see that it really produces dust really fast. So this is a huge amount of, of copper dust that comes up really quick because the 600 grit is really pretty abrasive. It's pretty aggressive. And you can see that it's also leaving a texture. So this texture is smoother than this but it's still a texture. So if I were to do the whole plate with 600 grit and then call it a day, that too is going to hold on to ink and print as a tone in my plate. So this is just the first step. Rather than have the video shoot while I do this whole plate, we'll stop here and we'll pick up again in a minute. So I've gone over the plate surface once. This is still my first pad. This pad is now kind of dead but it's done a pretty good job. I've still got a, a bit more texture I need to remove with the 600 grit, but it's time to change this out. You'll see that these foam pads from 3M, they do start to disintegrate. So as you peel this up, try not to peel up the adhesive behind the Velcro. So peel up one end and then hold that down and then pull the pad up. We'll put it in that box, but we're gonna, we're gonna remember to throw out that box here just when we finish. 
So I'm going to get another 600 and put it down. I've got a few more scratches that I need to work on. You might be able to see one right there, and there's a few others. And I just want to make sure everything's gone. I wouldn't want to get to my 1500 and then realize that I've still got some big scratches because I'd have to go back to 600. So before I move from the 600 to the 1000 grit, I do want to make sure that all the scratches and all the, the grain are smoothed out and gone. There is a, uh, a certain amount of practice that's required in terms of playing the light off the surface to determine whether those things are gone. Um, that's a hard thing to explain, but you'll, you'll get better at determining just by playing light off the surface. So there's still a lot of dust on there, that's fine. But this is what the plate looks like having gone over it with two 600 grit pads. So I started on this side with a new pad. I did the whole thing. And then I put the second one on and I reversed the, the, the direction. I started in the area where the pad was wearing out and I moved to the area where I had first started. So you, it was a really pronounced texture left from the 600 grit, but the grain and the scratches are gone. So now I have a thousand grit that goes on and I do all that again. So this is what it looks like when the 1500 grit has been completed. So we've now done all three grits, the 600, the 1000, and the 1500. At a plate this size, we use two pads of each grit for a total of six to get to this point. Looks pretty good. You can still see some slight texture left from the 1500 grit and it's not quite mirror finish yet. So the last stage is using this pad and a polishing compound to get it to that mirror finish. So to take this off again, you're going to press that button and you're going to turn this until that button locks in and then it'll just turn right off, come unscrewed. And we'll set that aside. We have this here. This will screw on too far down and this shaft will stick out if we don't add this here first. So we're just going to screw that down. Okay, just like that. So now we're going to use some of this polishing compound from 3M. And of course, squirting this on If you use, you want to shake it up a little bit, and if you use too much of it, it's going to spatter all over the place. You definitely want to be wearing an apron. It's not particularly dangerous, but uh, uh, you don't want to, you can see it's kind of a paste. And you'll be adding more as you go. So again, you want this on a fairly low RPM. I'm going to leave it on four and see how that goes. I can also somewhat control the speed by how far I pull the trigger. So if I pull it fully, it goes pretty fast. But if I pull it just a little bit, it can be a little bit slower. So I want to think about, again, which direction it's turning and what part of the pad is in contact. Same deal as before. So if I have this part in contact, I would not want to be in that orientation to the edge because it's going to catch on the edge and throw the tool at me. If I'm on this edge, I want to be this part so that the wheel is in contact from the inside to the outside.
you can see that even after the polishing compound uh, gets absorbed in the pad, it's still working. So it's not like you need to have the wet lubricant everywhere or anything. You can see that the discoloration happens on here. That's a mix of the polishing compound and the, the copper dust, the copper particles coming up onto this. That's fine. But you can really see that this is now, this area right here is already starting to look pretty good. The closer you get this to mirror finish, the easier it will be to wipe off the excess ink off the surface and get a nice white paper in your non-image area for that. So you can add more of the polishing compound, but there's but use it sparingly. You don't want to um, have so much on there that it's going to spatter everywhere. And you can use it for quite a while before you have to add more. So after working with this pad and the polishing compound for a few minutes, I get pretty close to a nice mirror finish. It ain't perfect right now. And uh, everybody doing this will have to find their own balance between perfection and patience. But that's gonna wipe pretty well. I'm gonna do a tiny bit more. It's quite possible at this stage when you think you're doing the final step that you only now notice that you left a few gouges from one of the earlier stages. So for instance, you might have kind of gouged into the surface of the plate with the 600 grit, but that gouge did not get fully removed from the 1000 grit and the 1500 grit. And you're only noticing it now, that can happen. You have two solutions with that. One, accept it. Two, go back to the grit and repeat the earlier steps. And of course, you always have to finish with this pad and the polishing. So yes, if you go back to the grit now, you have to then go back through the stages again. So if I go back to the 1000 grit now, then I'm gonna to have to do 1500 on top of that, and then this pad on top of that. So it's a question of how much perfection do you want? But again, the better it is, and the more flawless it is, the better your plate is going to wipe. Now when I'm done with this, um, I not only toss the gloves, I'm going to bring all these tools back up to the shop. I'm not going to disturb anybody that's working in this area that is enrolled in sculpture. Uh, but generally I like to go home and put these clothes in the laundry and change clothes and probably shower. So obviously I've gotten copper dust on my clothes, on my arms, my neck. Not a lot, but a little bit. I would definitely not want to do this indoors. That's why we're out here. Um, but I also don't want to then use the wear, continue wearing these clothes for a long period of time. Most people don't react to it, but some people will get itchy from the copper. So that can happen. Um, so polishing copper is something that I tend to um, kind of plan about. I will uh, I'll polish a big, pleat, a big plate, and when I'm done, I'll take it back upstairs, and then I'll leave, go home, change clothes, shower, and then come back and go to the next stage. That's it.